welcome to another episode of Coffee and a Chat with Dave. of all applicants and candidates and I'm getting a lot of emails about this interview question and this is opportunity to break it down okay imagine you have just sat down for a job interview with an interviewer John he just introduced himself to you and the first thing that comes out of his repertoire is tell me a little bit about yourself in this situation, the first thing that comes to, to our mind is go to the sixth gear and just pump out as much information as you can, as fast as you possibly can. And this is usually how it goes. Oh, absolutely, John. I was born very young. I grew up in a little city where, as you know, your company has always had a huge presence. I was an excellent student and my fascination with sales started. Say what? You have just lost your interviewer completely. Your interviewer already started preparing plans for dinner in their mind. Dinner is served and he is in bed. Hold on. Stop. Breathe. Think. The unwritten rule of a job interview is to keep the interviewer engaged in your answers, not send him to bed. Do you know what they are truly looking for? Did they tell you anything about the position, company, or their challenges, issues? In general, they are looking to draw a conclusion. And this is the key word, draw a conclusion that your skills, knowledge, experience, and personal professional traits will be the perfect fit for their company the team that you're going to be part of, and that you can solve their challenges and add value to the company. The question usually comes as an icebreaker, and you need to find out what specifically they're looking for. You just don't go and pump out as much as information because that's not how it goes. Don't just rely on the job description alone and don't assume that the interviewer is interested in your personal story. No, they are not. You're still not working for them. You are just a candidate. So what do you do? You ask questions. So first thing you have to do is ask questions. Look, the 2080 sales rule says, 20% of your effort should deliver 80% of your success. And your effort is divided into 20, 20, 60. Just as in sales, 20% of your available uh, interview time or meeting time, ask open-ended questions. 20% of your time do a presentation, talk. But also observe what comes to their mind and, and whether you're supposed to start asking questions again to keep him engaged. 60% of the time, let them talk and you listen carefully. You're listen, listening for clues. You're listening for ideas. You're listening for troubles, issues, potential problems they're facing and how you can possibly add your input and say, oh, I can resolve that issue. I can solve that problem for you. Boom, in no matter of time. I'll do it in a heartbeat. So once you know the pain points, you know how to approach it. Let them tell you what they need to, need to hear and what they want you to say because they, eventually they will reveal that and answer accordingly. Okay, let's try again. All right, I'm John, sales manager, and uh, please tell me a little bit about yourself. All right, uh, absolutely, John. Uh, but before I start, may I ask you a couple of questions? 99% of the time, they will agree and say, of course, go for it. This is something that you need to be ready for. You have to prepare at least four questions for your interviewer. But here's the catch. When you, when you question your interviewer, make sure that your questions contain main question and sub-question within. 
Here's the reason. That means they'll have to answer two questions. Usually, they'll answer the first part and skip the second because they only hear the first part. Be prepared to remind them about the second question or second part of your question. The reason for that is, A, they can realize that you're interested, and B, you want to keep them engaged. You want them to talk, keep talking. Now, these are the four questions that you can possibly ask from my repertoire. The first question is, is there anything from my past that got your attention that you would like to hear more? And what part of my past is your priority? This is something that they will reveal if they read your resume, your cover letter, and what is actually they're interested about. Which part of your past is intriguing to them? And you have to talk about that part mostly. So that 20% of your effort is that part of your past. Be brief, be short, be sweet, and don't go overboard with your answers. Just straight to the point. The second question is, by what criteria will you select the person for this job? And what is the main priority of this role? Now, this is something that you will definitely understand what they're looking for. If they tell you everything, this is where they're going to reveal it. And the, the priority of the role will tell you what you need to focus from your past. So if their priority is uh, expanding the, the market share, so you tell them where you did that, how you did it, how you performed, and what you actually do about it, and how you approach those uh, that matter that they're actually looking for. The next question, please tell me about the company's challenges and issues that this position is facing. What results would you like to see in the first month of this role? Now, issues, challenges, and what you need to do in, within the first month. They will reveal you what they're facing, what problems they're facing, what they're faced with. So if you can actually resolve those issues right there in interview, you land at the job. If you have a solution for their problem, for their challenge, or if you have an idea how you would approach that, that's why I'm saying to you, you have to put yourself in that position right there and then. You can't be yourself on that interview. You have to place yourself in that position and approach that position or the, approach the answer or the challenge or issue from the position where you are applying for, rather than to what you've done in the past. And the fourth question would be, if I was a selected candidate for this position, what would be my greatest accomplishment within the first three months that would make you proud of selecting me for the position? This is one part question because it's broad. If the interest is to for you to go out and see as many clients, uh, building relationships. You know that you as a salesperson, you will need to go out there, build relationships with them. If you're selling services, it'll be much harder. So it's a longer uh, process from the, the, the products-based uh, selling. So you have to figure out what they actually need and what they want. Is it the speed they want? Is it the quality or quantity? If you really want this job and if the quantity is in, in question so you have to judge whether is some, this something really that you would be happy with let them talk and let them tell you what you need to say they will tell you that they will reveal what you need to say as, as part of that uh, question or as part of their question business owners love to brag about their accomplishments and achievements and Ask them what, what is their biggest achievement according to their answer, align your views with theirs and hit their soft spot. So if you hit that soft spot, you create a connection. People work with people that have connection. They, people work well with people that have connection immediately. So that soft spot will enable you to gain that connection and advantage over every single candidate. Everyone has one. Every person on earth has soft spot. And all you have to do, 
ask and carefully listen, they will reveal that soft spot. The answer will be revealed to you and you have to go with the flow. Don't rock the boat, don't go overboard, just follow the clues. I hope this overview of the nemesis interview question, a number one enemy of all job seekers, will give you a little bit of idea how to approach this question in a different light, in a different way. If you didn't already subscribe, please do so, help us grow, please share and like our videos, please take care of yourself and each other. Thank you for watching.